Hey everyone, what is up? I'm Abby, the food scientist, and today we're talking about a lot of people's favorite treat, chocolate. So chocolate starts as a bean that is so bitter you would spit it out if you tasted it. It doesn't have chocolate's flavor. It doesn't smell like chocolate. So what we're diving into today is how we take those bitter beans and transform them into the chocolate bars we know and love. All right, our journey actually starts with the cacao tree. Now the cacao tree is scientifically named Theobroma cacao, which I think is great because in Greek, Theobroma actually translates to food of the gods, which I could not agree with more. So the cacao tree is kind of picky. It can only grow under really hot, damp, and humid conditions. So you'll only see these trees about 20 degrees above the equator and then 20 degrees below the equator. So countries like um, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Brazil, Ecuador, they're growing a lot of cacao trees. They have the right conditions. And once the cacao tree is mature, uh, say it's been growing for a couple of years, they will actually start to produce these white little flowers. And what we need for chocolate is for these flowers to be pollinated. And the only pollinator is this little fly called a midge. So we need these flies to go around and pollinate these flowers because what actually starts to grow then is called cacao pods. Now cacao pods are, they kind of have this like leathery outer coating and they're about the size and the shape of a football. And as these pods grow and mature, you actually will see them ripen from more of a green color to a yellow tone. And to collect these cacao pods, it's actually pretty labor intensive. They're usually hand collected using a machete to cut them individually from the trees. But what you see once we've collected all the cacao pods is if you break it open, you see this sort of white mucusy pulp and that pulp actually surrounds and protects the cacao beans. Now each pod usually has about 30 beans in it and the next step is just collecting that pulp and the beans and you just need to collect this into a big pile essentially and you let it sit out in the sun and that's because this next step is fermentation and all fermentation means is that we are allowing microorganisms to metabolize the pulp and the beans. So usually it's beneficial bacteria and yeast in this case. And what they're doing on the pulp and the beans is they're taking certain organic acids or sugars that are present and they convert it to different products or molecules. In this fermentation, we need to make chocolate. This is very beneficial to us, these microorganisms. And that's because during this fermentation, these microorganisms actually make the flavor precursors and aroma precursor molecules that we know are so important in chocolate. So these are, these are good bacteria and yeast and we need them to make chocolate. So after about a week, we call fermentation done. And at this point, we are done with that white pulp. So you just have to collect up your fermented beans at this point. And they're usually transferred to these shallow trays and the beans are just sort of spread out into a layer on these trays and they just sit in the sun. And the reason we have them still outside is so that the sun will heat them and evaporate some of that water. And we want the beans to have less water so they're microbiologically safe when we ship them to other countries to be processed into chocolate. So we need to make sure we get enough water out of the beans so that no bacteria, yeast, or mold will grow on them any longer. But once the beans are dried, they're usually collected up and put into sacks to be shipped to countries that will produce chocolate. So really at this point, 
the farmer's job is done once they ship off their fermented dried beans. Once the dried fermented beans are received by the chocolate manufacturer, there is still a lot of processing to be done until we get chocolate. The first step is called winnowing. And this step is just separating the outer shell of the cocoa bean from the inner part, which is called the cocoa nib. Because all we want to use to make chocolate is the cocoa nib. We can get rid of that shell and winnowing is usually done just by sort of cracking open each bean and then removing the shell. So after winnowing, the next step is very important for the flavor profile of chocolate. And this is the roasting step. It's where the color, flavor, and aroma of chocolate is made. So during roasting, we take those cocoa nibs and we put them at high temperatures about 120 to 140 degrees Celsius. And during this time at high temperatures, we see browning reactions. And browning reactions are actually like a whole complex set of a lot of chemical reactions. But what happens here is in the chocolate, you see brown colors starting to be formed as well as the final flavor and aroma of the chocolate being produced. So roasting is critical for chocolate. After roasting, those cocoa nibs are actually uh, milled and milling just means they're sort of ground down into a smaller particle size. After milling, the product is actually called chocolate liquor. It's not at all alcoholic, that's just the term for it. So chocolate liquor does have the sort of flavor profile we're used to for chocolate, but it's very concentrated and still quite acidic and bitter. So at this point, we add our other ingredients to the chocolate liquor. So other ingredients could be sugar to make it sweeter, maybe vanilla flavoring, whatever you, you need in your chocolate bar. And this sort of rounds out that bitter or acidic flavor profile. It brings some sweetness or other flavors to the chocolate liquor. So after we've added those other ingredients, we need to reduce the particle size even more, and this is done in refining. So refining is just a step. That means we run this chocolate mass through a bunch of rollers. And as it's being worked through those rollers, the particle size gets smaller and smaller. And now we sort of have a product that is sort of a paste. It's like this grainy mixture. So after refining, we're still not done working the chocolate. We then transfer it to a conch. And conching is just another step where we're still working and mixing and shearing that chocolate mass. And conching, the name comes from the shape of a seashell because the first conches, I guess, looked like seashells. But during conching, the most important thing that happens is the mass sort of heats up as you keep agitating and mixing it and it releases the fatty part of the cocoa bean. It's called cocoa butter. And what happens is as this cocoa butter is released, it starts to coat each of the solid particles in chocolate. So either the cocoa solids, the sugar crystals, everything sort of gets this nice coating of cocoa butter. This is important because it's actually why chocolate tastes so smooth in our mouth. It makes chocolate flowable and more liquid-like. So it's really important for the texture of the final chocolate product. Once catching is done, we are almost done with making chocolate. So all that's left to do is the hardening or cooling step. And this just means we have a liquid sort of flowable chocolate. And depending if you want to make chocolate chips or chocolate bars or chocolate bunnies, you'll want to put that liquid in the bunny molds and then harden it or deposit it into chocolate chips and then undergo hardening. So it just depends what your final chocolate product is because during hardening, we actually cool that liquid chocolate down so that the fat crystallizes or the fat solidifies. And this is important because that gives the chocolate texture that sort of snap when you bite into it. 
So we really like to hear that snap when we're eating chocolate. So once you've molded or you have your chocolate in bars and it's cooled, you're actually ready to go. You can sh just package it up and ship it out. And that's chocolate. It's pretty funny that chocolate is a treat that almost all of us enjoy, but very few of us know where it comes from and what a complex process it is to go from the cacao tree to a chocolate bar. So the next time you pick up a, a treat from, you know, the grocery store checkout aisle, maybe just take a moment to appreciate how complex chocolate is. See you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.